The Packers' domination was a ton of fun to watch this weekend. They definitely pleased the hometown crowd and then some. We'll recap the highs and lows from that game and look to this weekend when the Green and Gold get another chance to improve their record at Lambeau Field against the Houston Texans. It's shaping up to be a fantastic game between two young teams, both vying for playoff spots early in the season. As always, we'll have your feedback, our predictions, and much more all coming up next on your Packers Fan Podcast. Welcome back. Podcasting since 2005. No, not 2015. Since 2005. I'm Wayne Henderson, and this was such a wonderful Packers victory to watch. The cooler temperatures and rain early on made the Packers colors look even more vibrant than normal. And this absolutely enhanced all of the great touchdowns and those great fumble recoveries at La 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 Lambo. <laughs> and I'm Scott Clark from the Gaming Outsider Podcast. I have another confession this week, guys. What? I didn't see kickoff for this game. I uh, didn't even get to watch any of the game live. I was busy running a convention and had to rewatch the game at home on YouTube on Sunday night. Thankfully, the result was more than in our favor, and I'm excited to be here. Although still recovering from the busy, busy weekend that was R2V2. This is episode 304 of your Packers Fan Podcast, and this time around we'll uh, talk about that Packers win over the Cardinals, complete with all of your listener feedback. And then we're going to preview next Sunday's huge Texans at Packers matchup. Is it a Super Bowl preview? And Scott, of course, you're going to have your keys to a Packers victory over Houston, so I can't wait to get there. But first, let's relive some of the highs and lows from this past weekend's game. Let's do it. Let's start with the Packers leaders in the game against the Cardinals. Uh, first off, passing, obviously, Jordan Love. Uh, he was 22 for 32 for 258 yards, four touchdowns, uh, one interception, but a passer rating of 119.5. So pretty solid showing there by uh, number 10. On the rushing side, Josh Jacobs, 18 rushes for 62 yards. I, and on receiving, Christian Watson leading the charge there with three catches for 68 yards and a touchdown. And I got to say, I love that our top receiver had three catches for 68 yards. That, to me, tells us we're doing exactly what Green Bay does best, which is spreading the ball when it comes to passing. Absolutely love to see that. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, let's see, the number one player over there was uh, Quay Walker. He had uh, 11 total tackles. Uh, Ten of them were on his own, so that was uh, really great to see. Uh, I love seeing his name at the top of the list. And I love just seeing tackles being made. It's a huge improvement. Huge, I tell you. The opening offensive drive on a rainy 49-degree day, we did get the ball to start. And right off the bat, very first play, we kind of get ripped off because what should have been a free play when the Cardinals were off sides, inexplicably, the play was blown dead. Even the commentators were like, I don't know why it was blown dead. It's not like they were about to sack Jordan Love or anything. So ended up punting a few days, uh, a few days later. We ended up punting a few plays later. And on the plus side, Daniel Whalen, what a punter. Amazing punt going out of bounds around the eight yard line giving uh, the Cardinals not the best spot to start. Yeah, what a what a punter he has turned into. It is mm-hmm. so cool to see that. I mean, it looked like it was bouncing. And it, was, it went out earlier, but it looked like it was rolling down the sideline and went actually in like within the two. But, uh, hey, I'll take the eight. That uh, was awesome to see. I don't understand the whole blowing the call dead thing. Like, that's what Aaron Rodgers used to do. He kind of centered his offense around drawing them off sides. Why is it one way or the other? What is the what is the differentiator there? Nobody can seem to tell me. I don't know if there's an answer, Scott. It's one of the great mysteries of life. <laughs> yeah. As for our opening defensive drive, uh, between some good defense and some offensive miscues, we held the Cardinals to a three and out. Cardinals punted from the nine-yard line. We already had de- decent field position, but on the return, the Cardinals committed a face mask penalty against Reed, which moved us up even further, which was uh, really great to see. Love to see those penalties in our favor. It's an unusual change of pace. I'll take it. And it was cool yeah. to see us starting our second drive already being past the 50-yard line, all right? And then having Josh Jacobs go for a nice run right off the bat, for another Packers first down. Bo Melton then got us down to the 10-yard line. 
followed shortly by a touchdown by Jaden Reed. The point after attempt, it was good. It was seven zip Packers. We were already starting to get on a roll, Scott. So it good. It was good to see. Stayed seven to zero at the end of the first, but quickly into the second quarter. Romeo Dobbs with an excellent second effort to get the touchdown. PAT was good. Packers were leading 14 to zero at this point. Uh, this was great to see, especially after you know the situation with last week where he was suspended. Uh, great to see him just jump right back in full force. And man, that that second effort was no joke. He kind of like died for the a dove. Did I say dived? He <laughs> dove for the corner of the end zone there. Uh, it was it was I was so happy for him. And that's again just a testament to the camaraderie of these players in the Packers team. You know what I mean? A, a lot of guys could have come in there with a chip on their shoulder and just done whatever, but he stepped up and it was, and I I love the guy. Yeah, they all seem to love Romeo. Romeo loves them and that's good camaraderie moving forward. And speaking of spreading the ball around, great to see good old number 89, Ben Sims, getting his first catch of the year. So many different receivers on this Packers team. I had to think for a minute, Ben Sims, Ben Sims. Number 89 looked very familiar. And then I'm like, all right, we'll take it. Thank you, sir. (laughs) And just for kicks, Braden Narvison made two of his three field goal attempts. He was uh, perfect on his point after touchdown attempts. Uh, we've kind of had question marks about Narvison and uh, breaking news as of this recording. Earlier today, the Packers did let Narvison go and sign Brandon McManus to be our new kicker. He was a former Bronco and a Jaguar. I know very little about this guy. The name uh, doesn't, uh, I, the name sounds familiar, but I don't, I don't follow kickers nearly as well. If they don't say, you know, Mason Crosby or Justin Tucker, um, you know, it's it's. It, I, I don't differentiate them too much. How about you? The same here. I don't know too much about him. I know he's pretty steady, so hoping it's an improvement in the kicking game that we've been lacking since uh, since Mason Crosby. And I know some people are a little iffy because of recent allegations, but he was cleared of those allegations, and I think that means we can all move on. All right. And overall, mm-hmm. you know, here's something. Not all that surprising, but it would put a smile on my face anyway. Our defense did a pretty good job of not letting Kyler Murray run all over us because in years past, we were always a little skittish about the running quarterbacks, but uh, Kyler Murray did a lot of other great things, but he did not run all over us. And I think that must have been a focus for the team going into this week. In the second half, we opened up on defense, and we pretty much let the Cardinals' offense just march down the field. Second half adjustments might just take a while to kick in, uh, so uh, things were looking a little rough. But uh, even without an Xavier McKinney interception this week, the takeaways were awesome. The defense caused and recovered three Cardinal fumbles. Oh, that was just great to see. Three in one half is just, just incredible. Uh, and I guess he's just going to have to make up for it next week and get two interceptions against the uh, the Texans to make up for it. Can you imagine, Scott, Xavier <laughs> McKinney getting two interceptions in one game against— Or I take a pick six. That counts as two, right? One and a half. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pick six. I'll be super-duper happy. It's going to be fantastic. Um, some of the lowlights in the game, you know, although we did have fewer penalties against us for much of the game— Close to halftime, it was the penalties that helped practically give the Cardinals their first half touchdown, which made it 24-7 right before the half. I mean, they, we were just letting them, oh, here, here's another free 10 yards. There's another one. We just kind of let it, took our foot up uh, the gas and lost our focus on defense for a little bit. But it was still yeah. an improvement over what we've seen earlier this season. Yeah, the penalties and the kicking has been our downfall, which if you're going to have something i'd rather it be that (laughs) you know we can uh although we did lose a game because of the kicking so that there there is something to be said there too but um it wasn't a factor when it came to final score this time but also because it was raining earlier lambeau field was a bit slippery bo milton uh fell down on a pass route which let the ball go straight to a cardinal and get intercepted on the 45 yard line with just about a minute to go left in the first half. This is definitely a face palm moment. Our defense tightened up somewhat, but let the cards get a field goal, bringing it to 24 to 10 at halftime. Uh, but again, at least they held them to three. 
Yeah, and I think you can agree that that interception definitely should not really be counted against Jordan Love at all because it was perfectly on target. Bo Melton just slipped and fell down, and there just happened to be a Cardinal right there. Mm -hmm. Also, injuries raised their ugly heads on this day. Our center, Josh Myers, had to leave the game. Uh, was banged up at one point in the second half. Dontavian Wicks left with a shoulder injury. Certainly both hoping that both of those guys are uh, are doing okay. Uh, we're waiting on the status to see what's going to happen for uh, for the coming week. Yes, because health is a big concern. Just ask the Detroit Lions. Oh, man. Now, we did have our weekly poll question. Remember, we do post it in our Facebook group where we'd love you to join us at PackersCommunity.com, as well as on X at PackersFamPod. Wanted to know, which do you think will play a bigger factor in the Packers winning over this next month that's coming up? Is it going to be Christian Watson's injury recovery that's going to help us the most? Jordan Love's injury recovery? Or the fact that we're committing less penalties? And then we did get a write-in vote from Bill Gardner saying the team delivering in every aspect of the game. Fundamental football. Hey, fundamental football. That's my phrase, right? I love it. <laughs> I think the easy answer here is committing less pen penalties or fewer penalties. Sorry to bring my English teacher into there a little <laughs> bit, but yes. Oh, my bad. I'm not going to I'm not going <laughs> to ace that final. Dang it. Yeah, I mean between that and the kicking that was really the only major negatives. I mean, you can't uh, you can't fault a team for slipping. You know, they caught, they did get an interception. That's just, uh, it's the, the ground was wet. It's, it's impossible to, to really foresee that kind of thing. So I'm going to say penalties for sure. How about you? I think all in all, the, the penalties would be the way to go. Normally, I would have gone with Jordan Love's injury recovery because it was so quick compared to what we thought was going to happen. But the fact that we have a solid backup quarterback that's 2 and 0, by the way, this season. Um, not as worried about that. The penalties is huge and causes us to not bang our heads in disgust mm -hmm. as many times during the game. And the voting went that way as well. After combining the Facebook votes and the ones on X, 62% went with committing less penalties is what's going to play the biggest factor in us winning for the next four games. Jordan Love's injury recovery got 30% of the vote. And then 4% of the votes went with Christian Watson's injury recovery and another four, Bill Gardner's write-in vote, 4% for fundamental football. I got to tell you, Wayne, I freaked out a little bit when you posted this comment because, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't watch the game live. I knew nothing about what happened. And so you post this question about what's going to be the biggest factor, and one of them is Jordan Love's injury recovery, and I freaked out. Oh no! I was like, did he get hurt again? Like, what is going on? So I had to like look it up and 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 assure my myself that things were okay before I went home and actually watched the game. I had to know. Well, but uh, yeah, let's just say thanks if, for the scare. If there was something like that happening, you would have received multiple text messages from me and hoping that you'd peek at your phone. I mean, if you're going to peek at your phone to see a poll question that's posted, I would hope you would see any urgent text messages about an injury. Yeah. I mean, I was keeping up with the score. I, I had it, kept refreshing it to see. And once I got kind of comfortable, I wasn't paying quite as close attention because obviously I was busy. But Yes, uh, you were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had some comments on the poll in the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook group. First off, Dan Dyler just goes to show how when you play a clean game, good things happen because the team can get into a rhythm. Look across the field at Arizona. They had 13 for 100 yards. One of them was especially costly on the read fumbled punt which would have given them great field position at a crucial time they just couldn't seem to get out of their own way thanks so much dan for the comment as always i'm sure we'll hear from him again later in the episode remember you too can be part of the packers fan podcast facebook community over at packerscommunity.com check out all the fun especially for our live game chat sections during the packers texans matchup and yes, I will be watching that game live, and I will take part in that conversation. <laughs> you'll, you'll see as the kickoff well. and everything. Yeah, dude, this is good to hear. Well, let's dig into the listener voicemails and emails. Packers fans, we want you to let your voice be heard and be part of the show next week as well. Recording your voice on your phone or computer, and then emailing the recording to feedback at PackersFanPodcast.com is the best way to go. But you can also simply give us a call on our voicemail at plus one nine two zero. 
three, pack, go. And in addition to your thoughts about the Texans and Packers game, we also need your wager o fun score predictions for the Week 8 matchup when the Packers head down to Jacksonville to face the Jaguars. Deadline for your calls will be Monday at 6 p.m. Central. Wayne, what do you got for voicemails this week? Well, we got a little bit of this. Go, 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 pack, go! Oh, what an awesome victory. What an absolute beatdown of the Cardinals. I did not expect them to do it that bad. Um, but then again, the Cardinals just couldn't seem to get out of their own way. Like, I think they had 10 penalties, something like that. Um, I started out listening to the game um, in my car as I was driving back from R2 V2, meeting up with Scott and some awesome people up there. Had an awesome time uh, Saturday night, or Saturday afternoon and Saturday night walking around, seeing the different booths, picking up a couple of video games, uh, and then the live music. Scott coordinated this awesome concert. It was great to see him. Great to see a bunch of uh, great, fun people and a successful, great event. Scott, kudos to you for putting that on. Anyways, back to the Packers. Um, Jordan Love, what can you say? Um, That was the first time since 1995 the Packers have had two consecutive home games at Lambeau Field with four passing touchdowns. The last time that happened was Brett Favre. Aaron Rodgers never even completed that feat. Um, Why is Jaden Reed on punt returns and not Keyshawn Nixon? Reed, he has proven himself to be uh, the the number – I think he's the number one wide receiver. I know they say they don't need a number one, but he's – he is the number one. I mean, he's just Mr. Everywhere. He's doing it all. And they're scoring, t- scoring uh, touchdowns, um, getting yards after the catch. He's catching everything. Um, don't put him in that position. Give that to Keyshawn Nixon. Um, like I said, he's just too far, too valuable to the team to be putting him a, on punt returns. Uh, speaking of valuable, somebody that's not so valuable, Narvison. Once again, with a a little, he should have been a. a, a Ninety-five percent of NFL kickers can kick this, the, the 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 field goals that he's missing. He has now missed the most field goals in um, in the NFL. Um, but let's go back to the good stuff. Jordan Love, he is now number two in the league in passing touchdowns. And let this sink in: he's missed two games, and he's still the second in the league. Um, Speaking to Scott's keys to a Packer victory, the Packers are fourth in rushing yards. Jacobs is, or at least was, going into this game, the fifth leading rusher in the entire NFL. And think about this uh, running back room. There's still rookie Marshawn Lloyd on IR and A.J. Dillon that's out for this season. Imagine if we had our full complement. That would be just crazy. Um, Our defense continued to show up and show out with three fumble recoveries. Um, going into, uh, next week, we got the Houston Texans, or as, uh, Tom Grossi likes to call them, the CJ Strouds. Um, and since they're opening up as three point favorites in Vegas, they usually, they usually get, spot the home team already three points. So that's three plus three. We're already opening up as a, a touchdown, um, favorite, which is crazy to me. Cause I think this is going to be a, a fight to the finish. Um, my wager of fun prediction is going to be the Green Bay Packers 24, the Houston Texans 21, 24, 21 with the Packers win. And one last little bit of nugget. Um, the NFC North is the first division since the 1970 merger with the AFL in which every team in a division, has four-plus wins through the first six weeks of a season. The NFC North is going to be a dogfight, guys, and I'm here for it because, you know, steel sharpens steel. That's how you get better, and we're going to be the ones coming out on top. Go, 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 pack, go! Go Pack Go indeed, Dan. It's always great to hear from you. And what an awesome surprise to see Dan just walk up and give me a big old hug at R2V2. I had no idea he was planning to come out. He came out with the sun. 
uh, it was it was really just to just put a big smile on my face and uh so very very cool to see you thank you so much man it means so much that you drove all that way out from my convention i have friends in town that couldn't come out and make it out uh so that really meant a lot man really meant a lot yeah why don't we <laughs> like we we need to read on offense more i love his point too about the running backs being healthy. Imagine if AJ Dillon were were in the mix right now. Like we were worried about that one two punch with the loss of Jones, but I think that one two punch would be perfect right now with AJ Dillon. So uh, I, he said that the Packers are a six point favorite. I have not seen that. I only saw three. So that gives me makes me feel even a little bit better about this game. But that's a that's a pretty big gap. Indeed, it is, and you know the point spreads they fluctuate going throughout the week so anything's possible i i don't mind if they list us as a 10 point underdog we're still going to win the game no <laughs> oh, spoilers hey, you mr spoilers. positivity oh my goodness let's go back and see who else recorded a message on their phone and then send it to feedback at packersfampodcast.com good morning wayne and scott it is jared in colorado calling in on yet another victory monday if my voice sounds a little off today, I'm not sick again. I actually was at the Broncos game uh, yesterday, so voice is recovering from all the yelling. A uh, ton of fun. Did some tailgating before that, and uh, as a result of that, given the timing, I watched the Packers game uh, on the TV in my buddy's uh, bed of the, the, my buddy's pickup truck. And he had it set up in the in the bed while we we're all. all all tailgating and so it's pretty cool to watch that i didn't have uh obviously with being you know having eating good food and uh playing cornhole and kind of just doing different things i didn't catch the game in detail but obviously caught enough of it Uh, i think overall this is the most complete game the the packers have played so far this season where they're firing on all cylinders and just looking dominant uh, which is awesome to see even special teams uh with a missed field goal and some some other you know, little minor struggles. They they still played better than they have all season long. Jordan Love, four touchdowns uh, this game. He's the first uh, Packers quarterback since Brett Favre to throw to uh, throw four touchdowns uh, in a, in, a, in back-to-back home games. Uh, the comparisons continue. Uh, I heard that from one of the other podcasts I listened to. So the comparisons to Brett Favre continue i'm personally trying to be a little bit more reserved uh but i can at least see a lot of similarities so uh that was really great to see love seeing the ball getting spread around uh christian watson welcome back uh you know obviously coming back with a strong performance romeo dob well dobbs welcome back uh we still don't know the details with what's been going on with him but hopefully things improve and uh you know kind of feels feels the love he's been getting he was getting from his really great performance. I mean, he's got, he got two touchdowns on the day, which is really, really cool. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you want to talk about everything you want to see in, in an explosive offense. I mean, over 200 yards passing, I think 179 yards rushing, something like that. So, I mean, pick your poison. Uh, Packers were able to do, to, to pick him apart, whether running the ball or passing, which is great on the defensive side. Unfortunately, Xavier McKinney's interception streak, uh, ended, but, uh, you know, they still had, you know, a, lot of, a few takeaways and were able to stop the run, which was, which was nice. Uh, would love to see the defense uh, pass rush get, have that kind of come alive. I don't think we've really, it's like the one area I don't think we've really seen uh, come alive yet, which is uh, weird because the pass rush has been actually been really good the um, last couple of years. And, uh, yeah, and on the defensive side, uh, I, it was hard for me to see. I, I feel like I saw a stat during the game that said that the Packers are leading uh, leading the league uh, the, uh, as far as defense goes in takeaways, which is really, really awesome. You have Jordan Love right now, who is number two in the league in touchdowns, and he missed two games. This is really, really awesome game. Really strong performance. Love it. Love everything I saw. And uh, it, it really just shows what this team is, is capable of. Um, I, I think it's overall just been a really, uh, really strong showing. I'm excited to see what what the Packers can do. Um, definitely on the note of the missed field goal, uh, would love to see that cleaned up if possible. Uh, Narvison right now leads the league in missed field goals. And we all know what can happen when you have that 
that area of the ball or of the area of the ball being a struggle. It's unfortunately cost the Packers when it mattered most in the past. So, I mean, hopefully it never gets to that point, but you know, we just hate, would hate to have a season end because of, you know, a missed field goal or something like that. So, but not going to, not going to speak that into existence. You know, the Packers are looking great, really excited for, for what's to come. And let's do it guys. Uh, Big test next week up against uh, the Texans. That's going to be a, a tough one for sure. CJ Stroud's no joke. Their defense is really tough, and uh, I'm pretty sure they have pretty solid um, receiving weapons too. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got, guys. Green and gold, so dead and gold. Go pack, go! And I hope you guys are uh, having a nice uh, fall so far. Uh, hopefully, fall weather shows up here soon. Jared, thank you so much for sending that in. Um, yeah, that we actually haven't hit 95 degrees or higher for over a week. So fall may finally be here. And I love the fact, Jared, that you were watching the game on a TV in the bed of a pickup truck at the Broncos uh, game before or after it. Uh, I mean, how football is that, Scott? Yeah, right. Exactly. How Wisconsin football is that? (laughs) That's a total Wisconsin thing, man. I just absolutely love that. And yeah, love throwing four TDs in back-to-back games at Lambeau. That's a pretty big deal. Totally. I mean, uh, he's the second person to bring it up now with a voicemail. The fact that it hasn't happened since Favre, you know, Rodgers didn't do that. Again, this is one of those stats that like, how do they come up with this? You know, how do you like think of coming up with that? Two home games? I don't know. It's just kind of crazy how they're, they're able to do that. But those stats, guys, they know what they're doing. And we are playing at Lambeau again this week, so... What if he could do three games in yeah. a row at Lambo with four or more TDs? And Jared, I absolutely love the phrase "pick your poison" because that makes us even harder to defend. And I agree a hundred percent. We need to amp up the pass rush. That is one thing that I would like to see more of. What is going yeah, on? Yeah, I agree. I feel like we haven't uh, the sacks haven't been quite there as much as you know back in like the the days of you know Reggie White and AJ Hawk and. Uh, Clay Matthews and all that, but uh, you know, I want to see more Quay Walker getting in there. Let's do it. Yeah, the field goal situation uh, that should be clearing up as we speak. Yeah, uh, I kind of is cleared up. Yeah, <laughs> we'll just see how that goes. I guess we, we we're gonna have to wait and see. Uh, just a few more days at least, and then uh, Jared had a quick PS that he called in on the listener voicemail. Uh, brought up some interesting points that he wanted to share, and I like these. Hey, my name is Scott Jared in Colorado again. Forgot to include one more little tidbit of info. Uh, the NFC North continues to be the best division in football. It's insane how freaking competitive our division is right now. Uh, the Lions obviously really come alive in the last couple of years and are still look really strong. This, this season, the Vikings uh, have obviously been proving they're really good. And now the Bears with these last couple of weeks are looking really, really tough. <laughs> Crazy to think about, but yeah. Uh, Packers need to be on their A game because I have a feeling uh, that this division is going to come down to the wire, given how competitive, not just how competitive it is, but like competitive because every team is so good. It's just wild to think about, with especially, especially the Bears, man. But uh, yeah, and then the only other thing I forgot to mention, uh, it made me chuckle last week during last week's episode. You guys had mentioned something about uh, a few years ago, uh, the Packers breaking uh, Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. That season when the Cardinals had an amazing start to the season, uh, Packers broke their undefeated streak, and then they kind of just collapsed and haven't been the same since. I, I chuckled because it reminds me a lot, uh, and this is obviously a little bit of a local locality bias with me living in Colorado, but uh, it reminds me of the 2015 Denver Broncos Super Bowl uh, run. I had to share this with you and how they that, that Broncos defense that year pretty much broke Cam Newton. Take Cam Newton and the in, in the Panthers that year. They went 15-1, just totally dominant, widely favored to win the Super Bowl that year. And then just Cam Newton was just running for his life that entire Super Bowl game. And he was never the same since. So, I don't know, just want to share that with you. It's just I think it's definitely a thing. Certain things can just get in players' heads, and they're just not the same. So, uh, that's it. I've had enough feedback for the week. Love you guys. Go Pack Go. Go Pack Go, indeed. Jared, thanks again for the follow-up. Uh, yeah, the NFC North, who would have thought – that the NFC North would be so dominant this this time of the season, especially I mean, I'm not one to just like always crap talk about the Bears, but I really thought that they were going to fall into the same trappings of running that new quarterback into the ground. But uh, they're doing quite well. Um, it's it's just insane to see, and 
it kind of feels like whoever is going to be in second place is going to automatically get the wild card, which, you know, <laughs> just makes me want them to fight all that much more harder. There is no room for error. There really isn't. I, I still don't believe in the Bears. They, they've been playing mostly super easy teams for the most part. But there is a chance that, you know, if things continue on the way they are, that the NFC North, for the first time in modern football history, every single team in the division could make the playoffs. Because there's three wildcard teams now, right? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that would be insane. So the Packers need to make sure we end up winning the division. We just need to make up a little bit of ground. And an interesting thing, correct me if I'm wrong, but there haven't been hardly any divisional games between the teams in in our division just yet. They're, they're like backloading them to the uh, last third of the season is when a lot of those division games are going to happen. So things are really going to bounce around quite a bit it's going to be really interesting in those last few games of the season i mean just for the packers we've only played the vikings and that's just once exactly we haven't played the lions at all yet or the bears yet it and a lot of that is not even going to happen until after our bye we do have the lions game i think before the bye and then after the bye then we play everybody else it's going to be interesting to watch jared keep your eyes peeled now let's check in with some emails. I'll take the first one. Got an email this time from Megan. She says, I'm going to need you to read this in my voice because I don't have one. And we all know what's going to happen. It's going to be made worse when I'm at Lambo next week. What a game. Can I get a Go Pack Go? Go Pack Go indeed. And that was some four-quarter football. Got to start with mad props to our defense, although everyone can get props this time, right? Even McKinney, because if they refuse the, to throw the ball his way because they're scared, that's pretty much high praise right there. And our defense firing on all cylinders, getting its 17th takeaway this season already. It's hard to believe. Can't believe Evan Williams is a rookie either. Needs to be a household name. And how about that punt return by Keyshawn Nixon and Jordan blocking for Wilson late in the fourth quarter? And our spicy O-line who stays protecting our quarterback and making way for our run game to flourish. Megan continues, Jordan is looking better and better each week. It's amazing to think about where he is now compared to that November game in Kansas City when Rodgers had COVID and Jordan got his first start. I'm almost tempted to say that Jordan is a bad man. I know he can take some shots, might make others cringe, but I got to be honest, I appreciate the riskiness because high risk equals high reward, and it may allow for the potential of more interceptions, but playing it safe never helped anyone. I think he's learning over time when to make the riskier decisions and when it's a time to hold back just a bit. I just love watching him develop and leading his teammates and having fun playing the greatest game in the world. Last but not least, can we get a standing ovation for Romeo Dobbs? I've always been a big Romeo fan. I love his humble energy and to all the haters. He does show emotion, but he's one of those that never gets too high and never gets too low. I wanted to jump through the phone and hug him when reporters were harassing him earlier this week. I think people love to take a minuscule piece of information, blow it up 100 fold, but his hiccup last week was not a reflection of him as a person nor is a player, and I think it's probably a lot less of a deal than people love to make it. Either way, what a freaking comeback game for that man. Let's keep it rolling, baby. Bring on the Texans because we are back, Lambo. Go, Pack, go. Thank you, Megan. That was a nice Megan impression. The way you said baby is exactly how she says baby. It was pretty good, man. Kind of warms the heart, doesn't it? <laughs> totally <laughs> Thank does. Thank you, Megan. We also... We also got one from James from Montana. He says, Go Pack Go. What an amazing game of complimentary football. Any momentum they started to gain was almost instantly matched with a turnover or a big touchdown pass. I am so impressed by our defense. Every single one of them is so eager to get their own turnover. It makes watching the defense so exciting. It feels like they're on the cusp of another turnover on every play, even with a subpar pass rush, which I do believe will turn around eventually. Our defense is great, even with the pass rush rarely getting to the QB. Imagine how dominant they'll be when or if they get that part dialed in. Romeo returns and has two touchdowns. And how does he celebrate? 
giving his teammates a big hug. You'll love to see it. Speaking of love, he played a great game. It's too bad he had an interception off of a play where the receiver slipped, but he more than made up for it with some of those awesome passes and scrambles. Narverson had a miss, but the conditions weren't exactly the best on Sunday. It would be nice to have at least two or more weeks in a row without a miss. Maybe he's saving those for January and February. Bring on the Texans. Well, uh, uh, James, I got some news for you. Um, he's not going to be playing in January or February. But uh, there you go. <laughs> there you have it. Well, at least not for the Packers. Maybe for the opposing team that we're going to face in <laughs> January and February. We shall see. But speaking of the Texans... Your four and two Green Bay Packers are ready to host the five and one Houston Texans Sunday, October 20th at high noon central. The Packers lead the series four wins to one loss. And with that many games played against each other, you know, this series goes (laughs) uh, way back, uh, way back to November 21st, 2004, which was a Packers victory. The final was 16 to 13. We haven't gone up against the Texans since our huge 35-20 35-20 to 20 win over them in Houston in 2020, which of course was the pandemic season without many fans being allowed to attend the game. Attendance was 12,618, which is pretty darn sparse for a Packers game. Mm-hmm. And other than that, with only a five-game history between us and the Texans, there aren't really many ultra-memorable matchups to highlight. But this upcoming clash at Lambeau Field could easily turn out to be the highlight of of all Packers-Texans games. Jordan Love just getting started on his likely Hall of Fame career with the Packers, going up against C.J. Stroud, who could be very well ending up having his own Hall of Fame career. And of course, it's early, but it very well could happen for both of them. And maybe Xavier McKinney can uh, make it as well. So these could be the seeds of some Hall of Fame careers right here, Scott. I think this is going to be a huge game, man. I really do. I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. I think it's going to be both of these teams are, you know, coming off of good wins and and uh, they're they're in playoff contention. I mean, I know it's way early to be talking about that, but they're they're both hungry for it. Uh, and I think uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Fun stat, by the way. This one's in our favor. The Texans, not making this up. Read this stat today. Have lost eighteen games in a row against NFC opponents when they were on the road. Okay. So. <laughs> That's a pretty fun stat, and let's hope we can keep that one rolling for sure. I like fun with numbers. Now, Sunday afternoon's weather at Lambeau Field, it looks like uh, it's going to be a bit warmer, like it has been. You know, it was cold last week, but we're back to partly cloudy, 72 degrees Fahrenheit at kickoff, which is about 22 degrees Celsius. And in honor of it being so Christmassy outside, the Packers are going to be wearing their winter white uniform scheme and helmets personally not a fan i don't like wearing any alternate jerseys really and i certainly do not approve of voluntarily wearing what amounts to an away jersey at lambeau field stop the insanity yeah i don't like that either but uh hey as long as it doesn't affect the score i'm completely fine with it i'm hoping it doesn't but whether we're wearing white or green or gold what are the packers gonna do to get a victory over the houston texans this sunday afternoon at lambeau field I'm glad you asked, Wayne, because I got more keys to a Packers victory over the Texans. First off, strategy number one, underdog mentality. I know what you're thinking. The Packers are favored to win this game. As of this recording, uh, I show that the spread was three. Dan told me that the spread was three, uh, six in favor of Green Bay. But here's why I think the Pack is considered underdogs in this game. Although Houston is a young team, Green Bay is even younger, and they don't have that star power mentality that the Texans do. Sure, we've got some solid offensive players, but many of them are still very much in the growing stages and not as tested as others on the other side of the ball. The mentality going into this game should be one of fighting from behind, even if they're not from behind, to give them that extra boost to surge forward and score. Strategy number two, defense, stay frisky. Sure, McKinney broke his interception streak this week, but the Packers still recovered three fumbles. Whatever they're feeding those guys is working, and they are fired up. The defense is going to be the name of the game this week, especially with the Texans ranking number six in passing yards in the league right now. Still, I haven't felt this solid about Green Bay defense in quite a while, and it's evident that they are amped. As long as that energy is contained and focused in the right direction, they should be able to contain Mixon, Diggs, and the other explosive players, so long as that momentum keeps swinging in the right direction. And finally, strategy number three, Varied play calling. I'm genuinely genuinely torn uh, between suggesting whether the Packers should focus 
on the run or the pass game. Uh, I believe that this game will be won by the team that runs the ball more often. But on the other hand, the Texans' secondary is quite banged up this week. Jordan Love and his receivers should also capitalize that. So instead of saying one way or the other, I'm simply going to recommend a good mix of play calling that's going to keep the defense and their coaches guessing as to what's going to happen next. It warms my heart reading the stats each week and seeing a different name at the top of the list of receivers. Sure, Jacobs will get most of the plays on the ground, but a good mix on feeding him the ball and spreading the ball to the rest of the receivers is going to be key to gaining another victory this week. Oh, yeah. Another victory this week is what it's all about, Scott. Good work. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for our 2024 season wager of fun? Yeah. How would everybody do this week? Uh, me and well, let's the start, listeners. <laughs> let's start with you and me, Wayne. We had a, I, I don't know if this has ever happened. Has I, I'm not sure. Uh, here's Here we go. The final score was 34 to 13. I predicted Green Bay 30, Arizona 21. You predicted Green Bay 31, Arizona 22. And I didn't know this like would happen, but we both had a differential of 12. So oh. you and I tied this week. And I double-checked and triple-checked the math. Yeah, differential of 12, so nobody wins this week, uh, which means... I haven't clinched yet. No, no, no. You're far from clinching. You're far from clinching. (laughs) Uh, But in the the PFP listeners, we do have a winner. This week, the the closest guess was Garrett Stritzel. He guessed Green Bay 31, Arizona 21, which was a total differential of 11 points. So that gives him his first win of the season, which means we have a four-way tie for first place between Brett Connor, David Newman, Jay Walters, and Garrett Stritzel. So uh, it's a tight race over there, just like the NFC North. Just going to have to keep waiting through that this season to see who's going to come up on top over there. As for this week, I am going to predict a Packers victory once again. I think this is going to be a high-scoring game, kind of a shootout. I'm going to predict Green Bay 34, Houston 24. Wow, 34 for Mm -hmm. Green Bay. That is... A shootout. I think it's going to be kind of high scoring. Green Bay 30, Houston 28. It's going to be one of those where a missed extra point or something could come back to haunt one of these teams. So we're going to win by two whole points. All right. I'll I'll take it. Win is a win is a win. As for the listeners for week number seven of the PFP Wager of Fun, David Newman says Green Bay wins 30 to 27. Garrett Stritzel picks Green Bay 28 to 13. Jay Walters, Green Bay 33 to 31. And Dan Dyler also with the Packers winning 24 to 21. Oh, and Jared Machini Kerr says, I'm going to throw a wrench into this and be overconfident. Green Bay 42, Houston 17. That's a bold strategy, Cotton. I love that. Bill Gardner says, Green Bay 33, Houston 24. And Brett Connor says, Green Bay 27, Houston 24. So the streak is still alive this entire season. No one has picked a Packers loss, and that warms my heart. And the, Certainly. And the NFC North, the, the numbers are crazy because of people being on buys, going on buys. The Vikings are 5-0. and oh, The Lions are 4-1. and one, The Packers are 4-2. and two, And the Bears are 4-2 and two going into their buy. So it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, one of these days we'll all have played an even number of games. But for now... We just had to make up ground. Absolutely. And third place may seem like uh, we're coming from behind, which we are, but uh, man, I mean, it's, it's anybody's at this point. Like there's, it's, it's such a tight, tight division. It's the tighter, tightest I've seen it in a long time. We had some other NFL happenings that caught our eye this week. How can you not mention that uh, Hail Mary pass that Rogers threw during the last play of the first half? last night, actually, as of this recording, that looked very reminiscent of a certain play that took place during a certain Packers-Lions game from several years ago. Were you, were you kind of, like, thrown back to that uh, that game, man? Oh, definitely, as well as a very similar play in the playoffs against the Cardinals when he threw one and that was successful right at the end of regulation to get us into overtime. So that was so good to see, and... And, of course, more breaking news today. I guess Devontae Adams has been traded to the Jets. So, you know, if you've ever been a Green Bay Packers player, you may be entitled to compensation and extending <laughs> your career by playing as a New York Jet. 
at one point or another. So I don't know if that's going to help the Jets or not with their offensive line and all their other issues. You almost couldn't see very many of the plays because of all of the yellow flags being thrown. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was the most I've seen in a game in a while. And for me, the Detroit Lions, they're definitely not a team to take lightly, even with Aiden Hutchinson's terrible injury. Hopefully he, he will have a uh, quick recovery because that was one of the worst leg injuries I've seen in a decade. And I didn't see it yet, but I oh. had heard that basically his leg like wrapped around another player. Like it just, oh, I don't know if I want to go look at it or not. It was not the right thing to have happen. I guess it was maybe right above his ankle on uh, that bone. Anyway, he had successful surgery already and he's expected to make a recovery. It's just not going to happen this season. But yeah, the Lions, sure. Lions will still be a strong team. And as always, I remind you that the Vikings, the Bears, and the 49ers aren't quite who people say they are. They haven't really played that many hard teams yet. So um, just wait and see what happens. So this week seven, only two teams on a bye week. The Bears, who may not want to be on a bye week because they're kind of on a roll, and the Cowboys, who, speaking of teams that I think the Packers have broken, you know, two years of being undefeated at home. We march into uh, Dallas in the playoffs last year. We destroy them, and they just have not been the same yet. And with <laughs> the Bears and Cowboys being on bye weeks, I'm going to have to make sure to change out the many Bears players that I have on my fantasy team. <laughs> just kidding. I don't have any Bears players. Come on. <laughs> You know, that's one thing we haven't talked about is, uh, you know, the Packers buy. I feel like in the, in the past few years, we've kind of been looking forward to that buy at this point in the season because of injuries. Right. Uh, it's kind of nice not being in that position where we're like just hoping and praying for that buy. And we're like, no, we'll just save that for later on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you know, especially because we've got that long string of primetime games coming up isn't like four or five games in a row mm -hmm. that we're playing uh at, at night including like uh a thanksgiving game and you know it's just going to be a crazy crazy five weeks there but it sure is going to make thanksgiving really really interesting and fun yeah because we're we're actually playing two thursday night football games in a row the uh, mm -hmm. one on thanksgiving is like a thursday special edition of sunday night football i believe and then the following week, we're on the traditional Amazon Prime Thursday night football. And then we're either on a Sunday night football and then a Monday night football. So it's going to be really interesting. And I feel bad for our friends in Europe who that's a whole month that they're either going to have to stay up late or avoid spoilers and watch it first thing in the morning. I want to go ahead and tell you guys about my other podcast, The Gaming Outsider. We've got new episodes out on uh, Thursday or Friday. And this week, we are going to be discussing whether or not we like to watch other people live stream video games on services like Twitch. It's something that we've never talked about. You can hear my show at the same places you listen to this one. And you can also find them on our website, thegamingoutsider.com. Also, this is probably the last time you hear me talk about R2V2 oh, for come on. several months. Because, yes, this last weekend was R2V2, and it was a huge huge success we had so much fun lots of uh you know mistakes that we made in terms of learning for next year but we're already in the process of planning so uh, mark your calendars october 11th next year will be r2v2 2025 uh can't wait and i wayne i gotta tell you one quick story i know this is not a video game podcast not a music podcast but as i mentioned in the past weeks i got to put on a rock concert i had three bands come in and play video game music and it was so much fun. I got to fulfill a lifelong dream of mine. I've wanted to do this for years and years and years. I got to be the guy up on stage introducing the bands, getting the crowd hyped up and telling stories about how I met Grant and all this kind of good stuff. It was amazing, although I had, my voice was already starting to be lost. So I was struggling to get through, but uh, I had a, had a great time. Oh, and our headliner, Grant, uh, also known as Stimmage, he... Uh, didn't tell me he was going to do this, but you know how a band does the warm up, like a uh, you know, or not a warm up, but like a sound check before they oh, do yeah. their actual show. Yeah. Uh, the song that he chose to do for his sound test was the theme song to the '90s television show Beverly Hills 90210. Oh. <laughs> and um, so he played that, and we had a projector behind him. 
you know, that had, so you could have like images of video games and, and videos of video games playing while he was playing music from that. And uh, he told the rest of my team, but did not tell me. And lo and behold, there are three different pictures of the cast of 90210 where he took Photoshop and put my face on one of the characters from the show. And it was really, <laughs> really funny. So I will share those pictures with you if you want to see them. Uh, they're, they're, they're quite funny. I was, it, I was laughing so hard, but uh, great time. Thank you to everybody that came out, especially Dan Dyler, who drove all the way out from Indianapolis just to come to my convention. Um, it, was, it was really great to see him in such a fun surprise. Uh, thanks again for financially supporting the show through Patreon. Check out the details if you want to do that at PackersFanPodcast.com slash give back. Go Pack Go and thank you, Jay Walters. Your Bart Star legendary level patronage is greatly appreciated. And thank you and go, 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 Pack Go, Dan Dyler. Your Jordan Love Pledge is awesome. And how about these fine Brett Favre level supporters? Thanks and go pack goes to Miguel Ramirez from the Opposites Attract podcast. Megan, you heard her earlier, and Scott Boras. I haven't talked to that dude in forever. He's actually up in Green Bay. Great guy. Go pack go and thank yous also going out to our Lambo inspired supporters: Hank Davis from the TPE Network, Brett Connor, and Joe Christensen. If you're also interested in joining in. All of the details are at PackersFanPodcast.com forward slash give back. If you like the show, it is a free show. We would never ask you to put yourself in a situation where you could not afford something or it would put you in a financial situation. But if you like it, consider throwing a couple bucks our way. We do appreciate it. And you mentioned that we heard from Megan earlier. So my reading of her email evoked her that much that you thought you heard Megan on the show this week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, Megan, I'm sorry. I, I, I tried, but <laughs> good stuff, Scott. As always, the unofficial Packers fan podcast, not affiliated with the NFL or the Green Bay Packers. And like Scott said, you can help us out or you can even just tell a friend about the show because sharing is caring. We invite you to follow us on Twitter or that letter that Wayne likes to call it by. Uh, you can follow us at Packers Fan Pod. You can follow me personally at GoCast Scott or my podcast at The GoCast. And you can follow Wayne himself at Wayne Henderson. And to help amp us up to get a huge win over Houston, here's our PFP community members Joe Christensen, Dan Dyler, Megan, and Andre. Go, Pack, go! Go Pack Go! Go Pack Go! Go 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 Pack Go! go, 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 go.